this thing fits inside of this. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we just five in here. On. Let's see if I can repeat this right here. Right. Free will. Right. Like, do people have free will, or are people afraid of the consequences? Right. Do, do all like have free will? Free will for all, or people afraid of consequences from 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 God and man or from man and God because you know some people look at it just within the secular worldly sense and we want to address that you know what I mean and many people that have a problem with this idea of free will some people say that the Bible right the Bible um, based on the God of the Bible and based on like a biblical perspective I heard this argument and I think some people actually share this particular reasoning that from their reading of the Bible, there's no free will is where it seems to kind of crystallize that the God of the Bible doesn't give you free will. This is what I've heard many ones say, you know, and they go to certain areas of scripture, you know, to kind of uh, give some backative to that point. And I think part of it is like reading comprehension and also how we read things. You know, sometimes we have to reread something. You ever reread something? And you're like, oh, oh, because first when you read it, you, you, you get the words, but the idea doesn't fully come together. But if you read over again, maybe by reading over it, you can kind of get the spirit, you know, like the, not the letter. You with, know? That, with that reason, let me go back to go forward. You know, let me go back to go forward uh, for a second. All right, come in, brother. When we're talking about free will, that do you actually have free will? Now, one would say, let's, okay, let's for argument say, yes, you do have free will, right? I argue in that point right now. There's consequences that come with your action. So free will, your will is an action. So if you will to do something, you're going to take an action to do that. So that action can create a reaction. Now, that reaction is a consequence. Now, consequence is not actually a bad thing. You have good consequence and you got bad consequence. It's based on the action that you took with your free will. Now, mm. when I say let's go back to go forward, let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Oh my goodness, but bro, 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 can I say this right here? The people are gonna see it when you see the video version. You're gonna see it right here. I have a suitcase here of some pictures. I finally cleared the abundance of pictures. I had almost fifty thousand pictures. I had to get I had to get a stronger computer in order to be able to copy the whole thing. <laughs> no, for real, I kid you not. Everybody invest in gaming computers. Even if you don't play games on the computer, it'll make your stuff pop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but I have a folder right here, and everybody can see it on the side where it says "Free Will Album." I'm, I thought I had more pics, but I only had four pictures in here. But the spirit said, "Move on that." And when you said you liked how I had said that thing that I tried to say at the beginning. I said, let's just go with that. Then right below it is Garden Paradise. So I'm wow. gonna bring up a, a still right here. Go with it, bro. People are gonna see some of the stills here. Yeah. <laughs> no. In the garden, the father tell them, you can mess with this. Everything you can mess with except this. If you mess with this, this is the consequence. Mm. So, some might say they don't have free will. I arguing that they did have free will. Because he told them, this is the consequence if you do what I tell you not to do. You have the free will to go do it. Or no? mm. You have the will to go do it. There's nobody going to stop you from doing it. Mm. But you was told not to do it. So now if you take your free will mm. to go do what you was told not to do, mm. you have to deal with the consequences that come with that. Mm. Remind me so, of, mm, from the beginning, that free will came with a consequence. No, in this same reasoning here, because I wanted to ask you about this same topic here, and I'm glad we came to this type of reasoning so I could bring this in as well. With the free will that they were supposed to have, that they could have eat of anything, they could have messed with anything but this one thing. It seems to me that they never took the free will to go mess with the tree of life. Mm. And I'm going to 
Well, you come in after that. Mm, mm, don't miss it. Don't miss the well until the water runs dry, huh? Uh, and remember the old timers? Even, I, I guess you might have heard a version of this. You know what I mean? Because wisdom has no borders. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, free until you're full. You ever hear that one? Yes. Free until you're full. And then while you was reasoning, the thought came to mind that um, free will ain't free. No. <laughs> free will ain't free. So I was meditating on the same thing about free will because, like I said, I'd be hearing certain conversations on certain, like, platforms of we peoples like some black conscious circles and ones who be going back and forth you know pro bible against the bible the god of the bible yay nay whatever like that but i noticed that this one thing keeps coming up and what you said how you summed it up that the consequences and it seems to be the consequences in a misreading of scripture because i don't recall all the verses that they'll point to but they'll point to certain verses uh, like, for example, the Onan situation. This is a little outside of the garden, but the Onan situation. You know, Onan was the one that, I think, one of Judah's um, sons, the Canaanitish woman. And what had happened was that um, one son either had died and the other son had to go into the woman, the whole Leverite thing. Right? And he kind of went in and then he kind of like so-called pulled out. You know what I mean? When he came to that, when he came to the height, you know what I mean? He uh -huh. pulled out and his ting fell on the ground. And it said that the Lord struck him down, right? And people say, well, he didn't have free will. And what they seem to be missing is that he did have free will because that's why he got those consequences according to what is written. You, you know what I mean? All you had to do yeah. was that one thing. And when you start to dig into it, it was the pleasure it was the pleasure that he was seeking but not the duty and responsibility now going back before we can move forward to the garden and what you brought forward and gave me the opportunity to just say a couple of words here that yeah they did not choose out of their free choice right out of their free choice they did not choose the tree of life or oh, wait wait hold on for a moment maybe that was all part of the trick because he on this in this in this garden folder here one of the first photos i have that people are seeing right here one of the first photos i'm just scanning through it yeah i have this one for his majesty and her majesty here love to our brother ross elijah tafari i think this is one of his works right here i love this picture of the garden with him him and her you know in the garden his majesty and his consort right but in the first picture i have is the one where it shows like um, it shows um, um, the father, like a father figure, ancient of days, holding the hand of Adam. Right? It's one of the one of the orthodox paintings, but I like the colors here, and it's somewhat, it's somewhat, how can you say, uh, people of color. You know what I'm saying? Let, let me put it like that. It's somewhat people of color. It's not the blackest of the icons, but it's somewhat the people of color. Right? And let's go back to Adam. Because the first one that was told these things in Genesis chapter 2 was Adam. And when I read the language in the Hebrew, you know, and the Amharic as well, the good is also be as the same witness. It's basically him, the father, speaking to Adam, the son. Because Adam was a son. New Testament tell you that, that Adam was the son of God. Right? He was the son of God. You know what I mean? So it was speaking to him directly as him male. Then when you go to Genesis chapter 2, I mean, I mean 3, the next chapter over. Remember, they were naked. It says they were, they were naked. How, people, people, how do y'all say it? Do y'all say naked or y'all says naked? You know, there's naked and naked. I guess it's tomato, tomato. But they were naked, right, or naked, and they knew not any shame, right? Now we go to the third chapter, and it's that, that serpent. It's that serpent that some people want to credit with some great illumination. And there was illumination. The situation was very enlightening. If you haven't read the Gedla Adam, read the Gedla Adam, how their eyes was open to know good consequences, right? Good things and not good things or evil things or harmful things or bad things. But the language 
in Genesis chapter 3 remember I think I mentioned it that how Satan you know the enemies the adversaries have how did I say it before I'm, I'm saying now shifted the goalposts but they kind of shifted things right the enemy has shifted even people's understanding of 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 Genesis and the garden even though we read it right and we hear it read and people talk about it it's like everybody is keeps saying it in the sense of how we've been programmed in this Western world and this world system right how the ghosts of the of the of the age the, the evil spirits have programmed us but if we would stop and take a look at it it's like when Eve or the woman answered it's very questionable about what tree we're talking about I just want to point that out. Cause remember what she said? She said that the serpent did what? According to King James, beguiled her. Right? Another way of saying that, like today we'll say tricked. Tricked her. Right? And you know, like if you trick a woman, you know that what the connotation of that is. You know what I mean? You know the connotation of tricking a woman is. And in a sense, this is what happened in the story. I'm not going into, you know, talking about this for like you know people want to talk about sexual things no grow up and learn birds and bees and all of that you know the x's and the y's i'm looking well, at it like in the god lot of ways say um where the devil was so clever that he he tricked their mind mm. into believing that the tree of good and evil was of more importance than what it actually was ah there you go, there you go, okay. there you go. See, see I wanna... it was not one of the most important trees in the garden. It was one of the least important trees in the garden. Truly, truly, exactly. But 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 check this out. Can we just walk on this? We're still talking about the free will. Because this is this is a key area. And there's a lot of people, or there's many people, who would probably agree that there's no free will, the God of the Bible, from how they read or understand it doesn't give people free will and they will even say that Yeshua you know Robeno you know Adon he did not have free will either because he said let your will be done not my will the way they read it I'm just saying the way the way the spirit that works in the prince the, the prince of the air and all that the way the spirit makes them understand it or the way they believe it so we hopefully will unpack some things here that will show you brother you summed it up well about the consequences are afraid of the consequences right and what they don't look at is that every place in the scripture that they look at a person or a character or in the writing had a choice and, and they made a certain choice and usually it is being told commanded or forewarned before not to do something like if you tell a child or somebody don't mess with the stove and they mess with the stove and they get burnt. By you telling them don't mess with the stove because you're going to hurt yourself and they mess with the stove and get burnt, did you cause that? Did you deny them free will because you warned them? Does a warning deny you free will? Or does a warning, in a sense, accentuate and emphasize, highlights the fact that you do have a choice? You do have a choice, but this choice is going to lead to this sort of a consequence. Yes. You know what I mean? That's what the warning does. The warning gives you a, 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 an insight into what your consequence is going to be. Let me tell you who doesn't have free will in the creation, based on the scripts and based on what we can observe and know in the, in the really real, in the reality of this simulation, right? You know, you know who doesn't have a choice? I say who or whom. Basically... The sun, the moon, and the stars, the heavens in their orbit, don't really have a choice in that sense, according yeah. as it is written. You know, he sets these things, I think the Psalm 119, that's a really long psalm, there's a verse, I forget the verse exactly, but it's talking about how he set the heavens and the stars and the moon and all the, the, the heavenlies in their order, and almost like they continue ever since creation they go on it's like you know what i mean like you set a clock or you set a a machine or a device and then you create you know people and you give them choice but you warn them at the very outset really he warned him 
in Genesis chapter 2, just, just check out Genesis chapter 2 for a moment. Just to zoom in on this particular verse here because I want to compare what Adam was told. Adam was told this as a singular male, as a single male. He was told this before his woman was, was brought forward. You know, I'm not going to get into that whole rib thing there because that's just based on a, a, um, a translation that with better knowledge you recognize how poor it was. Maybe it was helpful for those in that time, but it's in the latter days, you know, things that were sealed would be unsealed. So we know it was not a, a rib rib, right? But we'll touch on that. Verse 15, 2 and 15. 2 and 15, where it says, And the Lord God, Yahuwah Elohim, took the man, right, and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it, to dress it, you know, almost like a gardener. You ever went to like a botanical garden? And when you go there, there's people who basically take care of the garden. And there's some things there, sometimes they have a strawberry tree or some kind of tree where you could potentially eat food or fruit from it, right? But now the gardener there, you know, though... Though maybe they can eat it, they don't go around eating the food because they, they, they were hired to take care, you know what I mean, of the garden, you know, to dress it and to keep it, you know what I mean, to guard it. But here's the verse, verse 16, and Yahuwah Elohim and Jehovah the Elohim commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now me and the brother, we discussed this before, I just want to just put this in one's ear. This has a lot to do with what many call the afterlife in its correct sense. You know, there's the whole thing about going to heaven. But what we have to recognize in the scripture, even the Messiah says it, you know, to a one that he's talking about um, the garden. And even Revelation talks about the garden. As it was in the beginning, you heard that before, so shall it be in the end. So we see in the beginning of the book, there's this garden. And at the end of the book, there's this garden. Right, and there's the tree of life, right? But here it says, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Note that right there, just people, people freely eat, right? Of every tree, but in verse 17, now some, some people who have poor reading comprehension or poor intelligence comprehension might think that why do you say but? He just says you can eat of every tree freely, but you know, with every rule. There's always an exception to the rule. In fact, it's the exception to the rule. Often a good rule doesn't have too many exceptions, but you might find some exceptions. Like when it says that, that Yeshua, the son, he will subdue every power, right? You know, under him. And it's with him being accepted, except for himself. He's not subdued. You know what I mean? Because he's a subduer. Right, you know, but he acts on behalf of the father, so he acts under the father. But actually, since him and the father is one, it's him doing the subduing. That's why everything gets subdued, with the exception of he himself. I thought that was an interesting. It's a verse in the New Testament, but the exception here is in verse 17, 217. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So that's the exception to the rule. The rule is that you can eat of everything. You know what I mean? With well, it's something, it's part of that people don't focus on, you know. They don't focus on the good and evil part, right? But the knowledge has to be connected with the good and evil. <laughs> that, that's deep that you say that. They forget about the knowledge. They have to connect that together. Mm hmm And what does it mean, the knowledge of good and evil? All right? What does it mean, the knowledge of good and evil? Let me bring up this first right here for the screen so, you know, so that ones can see this here. Let, let's see. Let me search this. Okay, let's like this. Okay, there we go. Two and nine. So it says, yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't even touch on verse nine. The same chapter, but verse nine, where it says, out of the ground made Yahweh Elohim. Now remember, it says, Lord God, or like Jehovah Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, right? To grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, right? Then there's a, there's a semicolon that says, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and and the tree of knowledge of good and evil now i, I just want to put this here before ones right here just take note of that verse 
Because to understand chapter two, a lot of people reason on what happened with the serpent and, and the woman and the man, but they forget this verse. They forget chapter chapter um two. Nine. Two and nine, right? And nine. then in chapter two and seventeen comes that exception. Now notice two and nine, how two and nine reads. It reads like what what Eve or the woman thought she saw. You know, it, it does read a lot like what she thought she saw. You know, when you read that there, it reads a whole lot like what she thought she saw, right? Because now, the way they teach it, right? The way religion teach it, it seems like the 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 the, um, the tree of life and the tree of good and evil seems to be far apart or uh, in separate areas. What this is telling you is they're in the same place. And if I may say this right here, and the tree of once I had to go to the Hebrew, check out the Amharic, the Gutters, just to see it. If that check out the Greek, I might have to go check the Septuagint, just follow through with that. But I found consistency in this basic translation when it says and it says the tree of life. Now, first it says out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim. I keep saying Yahweh or Jehovah Elohim because you're going to see the disrespect of the Nahash, of the serpent, when we get to chapter 3. Right? But Yahweh Elohim, he caused to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. That means you look at it, it's beautiful. Right? You know, those colors. I mean, nature. Wow. And good for food. Right? Every tree. Remember that later on, he tells, in the same chapter, he tells, he tells the man, the Adam, he tells him that he can do what? He tells him that he can eat of every tree. Yep. And then it says, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Now notice, that verse right there is directly what it says. And people miss this. The tree of life, right, also, with all the other trees, is in the midst of the, the, wow. the, the garden. In the Amharic, we say genet. Genet for garden. And in the Hebrew, we say gan. Gan, almost like the short form of Genet, Gan, right? The Gan, Gan by Aden. And the, the Garden of Eden, Aden, Aden means delights. It literally means delight, something pleasurable, right? Garden of delights, Garden of pleasure, Gan by Aden, or the Garden um, in, the Garden in pleasure. It actually comes out like that, the Garden in delights. But so it says the tree of life also is in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But notice what's emphasized here in the midst. That's why when you look at Revelation, it talks about the tree of life where? On the side? In the midst. So this seems to bring out that people often confuse and really think that it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is the center. And this is where my reading and studying over just a couple of days ago and I wanted to reason with the eye about it too so you, we reason on this and coming to this point and you bringing this forward is so interesting it's just in the irate because what I discovered was that how the serpent the Nakash or the Nakash how the Nakash naked Nakash the Nakash Nakash how the serpent tricked her right and it's the opening words you got to pay attention to words right it says Verse 17, I'm scrolling forward again in the same chapter. But the tree of knowledge, of the knowledge of good and evil. Notice, it does not say where this tree is. But we know from the previous verse that it's like nearby. Yes. The midst tree, the center tree. The center tree. All right? It says, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. I want to share with one's the Hebrew, um, mutamut, you know, basically is like is like death twice. It's like you be dead, dead, but actually brings out the sense in the Hebrew that from that day you will start to experience degeneration. You will start to experience, you know, they say people get old and the body changes. You know, we all hear about it. Some of us experience this. This is what he's saying. Cause people get this idea that. Yes, it's in the day, from the heavenly perspective, he didn't reach a thousand years, right? But in what he could feel right now, he would feel that after this experience, that they, was, they felt death. You know what I mean? They felt nakedness and death, 
You know what I mean? In other words, that process of the breakdown of the body, you know, they said the body, based on how the body is designed, is supposed to be like nature where it can renew itself. You know what I'm saying? And if this process were to continue, there would basically not be a death as people know death. You know what I'm saying? But somehow man seems to be cut off from this process that we even see happens in nature where, you know, a place that has green, winter time come but then we see it grow back again you know what i'm saying but instead of saying that he shall surely die the surely is death too mut tamut you'll be dying the death you'll be dying the death in other words you will be experiencing from that day forward a continual and accelerated um aging and death process you know, like we see in ones and ones that were young and they get old, whether they love ones around, so forth and so on. Now, let's just, can we just zoom forward to chapter three? Because I want to make this comparison in these two chapters. I don't want to go too much in depth there. But in chapter three, verse one, you know, the trickster is tricking. The, you know, when you ask a question, yay. I've been trying to figure out how I can ask my yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Don't you love me? Yes. Don't you love me? You're like, what is, uh, yes. <laughs> but it says, now the serpent, the Nahash, Nakash was more subtle. Now, this word subtle, Arum, is an interesting word. It means subtle, shrewd, crafty, right? Cunning. But then, clever, clever Aram. But it's also related to the word for nakedness. It's kind of an interesting word. It's like cunning in a bad sense, right? He's more subtle than any beast. So, so the serpent is a beast, right? Is a beast. But the word for beast is chai or chayim. Chayim means living, living ones. Chayim means living ones. Um, we as Yehudi and other Jews, sometimes we will cheer or toast or lift up the chalice, the cup and say, lechayim, lechayim. Lechayim is like, some will say cheers, but it means for life or for lives. So what I'm trying to say is that the serpent was a chayat, was a living creature. So the word beast, we don't have a word beast in this sense. This is not beast like another word like cow. This is beast like living, was a living one of the field that Yahweh Elohim had made, right? So basically he's a, the serpent was a created thing, right? A creation. And he said, the serpent said to the woman, Haisha, yea, hath Elohim said. Now, the first thing I want to point ones out, notice how the serpent doesn't say Yahweh Elohim. If we go back to chapter 2, where it tells us, gives us a testimony of what actually occurred in the dialogue that Yahweh Elohim had with the man, Ha'adam, you will see something very interesting here, right? You will see that right here, that the serpent takes off the Yahweh or the Jehovah name, right? And he just calls him by his attribute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's like um it's like it's like if we say just King of Kings. Now we as Rastafari know who we're speaking about, but in the proper sense, there's a name that's associated with who, which which king of kings? You know, which king? You know what I'm saying? It's like taking off like Jehovah, he who be who he be, Je Yahweh would be his name. So taking off his name and just calling him by his title or his attribute of powers, of creator, or in the translation sense, God or gods. Yea, hath God or God said, even though he says the said here in the, um, in the singular sense, so he's still speaking about the gods, the powers, he. But notice he takes off the name of respect, of honor. That's his subtleness there. That's the subtleness. In fact, she could have answered no. She could have said no. And just wait for his next question. Don't say no more than that, just no. Could have followed would be this. That it was not Elohim that said it was Yahweh Elohim. It was Yah Elohim. You know what I mean? Who said because that, that right there is a key thing that I notice most people that go through this miss that right there. Miss that part. That ye, y'all, shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Okay, that's his question. After his little subtlety in the beginning, his question is, y'all, you all, 
right? He's speaking to her, and he's speaking to her to speak for for y'all or for them, right? And the question is, y'all shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now notice the question. The question is almost like a statement, right? The question is almost like a statement. But what do we read in the previous chapter? What did he tell him? He says, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Freely eat. <laughs> but his question is, y'all shall not eat of all trees. Basically, it's implying starvation. Think about it for a moment. It's implying starvation. And you know, this is how Satan shifts it. You know, he implies something. You know, like I think we were speaking about that before we started the, the reasoning and the record here for Just Vibes and This Just Vibes and that um, he shifts it. He shifts it ever so subtly. You know what I mean? It's like the going to heaven bit, right? And we forget totally about the garden where the tree of life is. And if we have faith in the name, then the name gives us the authority to, 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 to reach and to grab and to eat the fruit of the tree of lives, of lives. It's actually the tree of lives, of, of liberty. It's not, it's not singular life as it's translated. It's really lives because in the Hebrew sense, every, our life is lives, if you get me. You know, even though our life is, li is, 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 is life, but in the Hebrew sense, there's many lives in one life, if you understand what I'm saying. So each of us have lives in one life, right? If we still have one life that has lives, you know, like when I was a child, when I was young, when I was a young man, you know what I mean? It, it's like each of these are almost like lives. But the question should have been answered by what Yahweh Elohim commanded the man in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Commanded the man, notice what it says, commanded. Not suggest it, not recommend it, <laughs> not say if you get around to it, you know, taste some of the trees. No, commanded the man. Notice who it says commanded, commanded Ha Adam, commanded the Adam, right? Commanded him to do what? Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, right? So this is the first part of what the serpent did. He took the, the name. He took the honor off of the Elohim. He just referred to the Elohim as creator. You know, some people refer to God only as creator in a sense. While some people recognize he is the creator, but he's also father. Right? You know what I'm saying? In, in other words, bringing out a deeper relationship. Or he, he be, he who be, who he be. The power. Some look at the powers and not the one who governs the powers. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, some people look at the gift. And not the gift. Some people thank the gift. Like you give me a gift and I thank the gift. Oh wow, yo bro, you got me this thing. What a wonderful thing. It's an excellent thing. I love this thing. But I haven't said, yo bro, thank you. <laughs> that's what Satan did right at, well, that's what the Nahash. I'm not going to go to the Satan. He's an adversary, but let's wait on that. Let's just deal with the text. And the woman said to the serpent, we, notice what she's saying. But what I read in Genesis chapter 2 is he she says says here we she could have said listen i wasn't i wasn't around for that you gotta speak to my man you gotta speak to the ha adam speak to the adam you know what i mean but the woman now she she figures she can take on this convo and she says we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden right well you know it doesn't really say fruit but she's conscious of fruit it says, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's interesting because it doesn't say fruit here. But let's just go on. Because I mean, maybe you can eat the leaves too. Think about it for a moment. Are, are some leaves also food? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But she says the fruit. So she's conscious of fruit now. Right? And this is interesting. She's a woman. And remember the woman's role in creation, right? We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden now she's going to bring in the butt now remember compare genesis chapter 3 verse 3 with genesis chapter 2 verse 17 so you can shift it away from the way satan the adversary has shifted all of christianity that the majority of people keep quoting and keep thinking the idea they believe genesis and the garden is talking about but they get the wrong idea that's why so many people wind up 
kind of blaming God or they wind up thinking that the serpent was a good guy or something like that. Verse 3, it says, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Notice. Now you see the midst of the garden? Everybody, get out your highlighter. In the midst of the garden. Now, in Genesis 3 and 3, 3 and 3, compare that with Genesis chapter 2, right? Chapter 2, verse 9. The last part of it where it says, where it says, um, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In fact, there was something here I wanted to look at. I'm out looking at it when I was saying, I hope me and Brock can reason on this one right here. And y'all provide that we can reason on this one. Let me get this part. It says, it says, with eights, eights ha hayim. And the eights ha hayim, betok. It says betok. Betok in Hebrew, talk is like the midst, like in the center. Betok. Right, but talk mean like in the center, in the midst. But talk, but talk hagan, but talk hagan. So the phrase here says, and the tree of the lives, the tree of life, where eats ha hayim, but talk in the talk, in the midst, hagan, in the midst of the gan. The gan is the garden, in the midst of the genet in them heart, but the gan. And it then says, where and so the and is a conjunction, the and. Is outside of the phrase right you know like when, when you're reasoning I'm saying yeah and you're gonna do such and such and such and such and such and that and you are gonna do such and such you separating you know this from that so it clearly says in the Hebrew what's not there brothers and sisters what's not there is what King James translates at this point King James translates and says says the tree of life also the word also is not there. You see how they shifted? The word also. Read that without reading also. Just read it again. Read the same KJV Genesis 2 and 9 and don't read also where it says the tree of life in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See that also is a is you know, some of us are writers, and sometimes some people say some of us can be wordsmiths by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, yeah. but you throw in one word, or you take out one word, yeah. and you slightly shift it. You know, snipers before they sniper, and back in the days, the archers before they do their archery, they had to make accommodation for wind. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Because the wind will change the trajectory. You're aiming right at it, but going over this distance, a little bit of wind will blow it a little bit off course. The change of comprehension. Exactly. So sometimes they had to have stronger bows and had to pull it back more so it can sail through the air faster and the winds won't shift it from hitting its target. So they shifted it by putting also. But the Hebrew clearly says the tree of life in the midst of the garden. In the midst. And... So notice, it could have said the tree of life, right, and the tree of knowledge, knowledge of good and evil in the midst. And that would then translate and bring out that both of them were center, central. I remember for a while, I kind of, I kind of scratched the, 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 the mental meditation. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, I knocked on heaven's door in the heavens while I meditated on this because something didn't feel right. Because people was talking about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was in the midst. I said, no, 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 no. And then by going over the text, I had to slow down and see, wait, Genesis 3 and 3, Genesis 2 and 9. Right now, this is what Eve is saying. So I'm not gonna be 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 by blaming. There's no misogyny here. Fire bun, a miss a miss agony or whatever. Miss agony agony. No, um, but but um, here's what I say. I don't know what Adam told her. Nowhere do we know what Adam told her in that convo. You know when they were. You know after she was brought forward and he praised her and thank ya and and they're laying down naked and not not being shamed. They didn't have no shame. You see what I'm saying? You know, maybe some of the naked people in parts of Africa were trying to hold on to that. You know what I mean? <laughs> At all costs, right? 
you know, but they had some shame, right? You know, I know what I just said there can bring up a whole other conversation, but let's go forward. But the fruit of the tree of the, of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Notice, notice. So what she's saying right here, she's saying, she's, what tree is she pointing to? I would say she's pointing to the tree of life. But, 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 but the Nahash, the serpent, where it says be wise as a serpent, harms the dove. The serpent's going to flip it because she already is off on certain points. She's already somehow beguiled, right? Not, not beguiled, but she's going to be beguiled easily because it doesn't seem as though she was given, either, she, either Adam gave it to her scrape and she just responded like this in the situation or maybe Adam did, I don't know. I just say, I don't know. But her statements here is opposite of what we have in the chapter before. She says, Elohim have said, now notice, the serpent disrespects Yahuwah Elohim, Jehovah the Elohim, right? When he just says, that the Elohim, the God say. Now she says the same thing. And I don't know about y'all's, but this is very important. The name is very important. You know what I mean? The name is, that's why throughout the chapter before you see Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah Elohim, right? In connection with these creative acts and with this command. So now, you know, they say one fool make many. You know what I mean? So like the serpent said what he said at the outro. She went ahead and started to parlay. But she was off. Or I count like two or three points she was already off on. Right? Like subtle points. They're very subtle. That's what I want to say. They're very subtle points. That's why Yeshua said, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. They're very subtle points. You know what I mean? Um, if, the, if, if, the, if the serpent wasn't such a trickster I know his subtle points I, I would feel confident I could trick him But I don't have to do that By Shem Yeshua And the King of Kings Christ he, He's already got And we got him here But now Eve has got here Because she says that Elohim said Y'all should not eat of it Neither shall y'all touch it Least y'all die Pause Does, does She's got him does Yahweh Elohim even speak about touching it? For, for years I was thinking about this because I picked up on that. A lot of people don't pick up on the touchy, touchy part. Because how are you going to dress and keep a whole garden and everything in there if you can't touch it? What do you think dressing a, dressing a garden is? <laughs> I mean, you would do gardening. I tell you, hey, well, do my garden, but, 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 but don't touch anything. What the? <laughs> do what to it? Right? She, now, and nothing that Elo, Yahweh Elohim didn't say. Right? He didn't say ye. He spoke to thee, speaking to Adam. Right? But she says, y'all should not eat of it. It was not a y'all commandment. It was like a you commandment. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like a, a younger sibling and an older sibling. The older sibling is told to do such and such. Right? The younger sibling goes ahead and, and does something else. Right? But the older sibling is the one that was given the command. You see what I'm saying? And then the older sibling said, well, the younger sibling go ahead and did this thing. And then the parents like, well, no, 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 stop. Who, you're the older one. I told you. I didn't tell them. I told you because then the parents think I, you, you are more mature. You're the older one. I think I can lay this responsibility on you. Who was the older one in this context of what's written? It's Adam. So like I said, I don't know what he told her, right? But I know that she is way off here. Now, once... The serpent heard this. He watch what happens now. And the serpent said in verse 4 to the woman, Y'all shall not surely die. Y'all. Remember, you all. Because he even probably knows that the command in Genesis 2, right, was to you male singular. You male. Remember what he said? The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of it. Yeah. It's almost like he did not recognize his, his, his responsibility. And I, you know, I'm going to say this just in passing. This is to black man too. We're in this situation because of a similar Adam thing. I just want to point that out. And especially to Israel. And it's kind of challenging for us as men to kind of see this. But man, once one see this, one will have free will. And one will take their free will 
and submit it to the almighty will, that's how your will will remain free. <laughs> and not in slavery. You know what I'm saying? Enslaved to man, beast, duppy, ghost, whatever. But what he said, you will not die to death. You y'all will not y'all will not die to death. Because remember his target, who was his target? Was his target the woman? No, he's using the woman. You know what I mean? And 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 the sad and and the, and the kind of sad thing is what our black woman in particular and women in general have experienced is similar. All this down pressure, she was not really the target. The, the, the original target she was like the bait being used to get the target and that's the man to whom more is given more is required I just want to point that out right there because remember we're going to find out that Adam was standing he was standing around he wasn't a far distance I've heard all type of people try to make all kind of excuses he was down the block he was around the corner or something like that no he, he was right there so now he says y'all will not surely die right but now, in a sense, he is a deceiver, but he's correct. I don't know one peep me on that. They're gonna say, "How are you gonna say deceiver?" But he's correct. He's a deceiver, in the sense that he is saying y'all, right? And he's correct that it was not a y'all commandment. It was not a ye commandment. It was speaking to Adam, he, directly. And sometimes we have in the scripture where. Where Yah is speaking to Israel or to Moses or to the prophets, and he does speak to one person, a ye. But in this case, in Genesis, he's speaking this exclusively to Adam. Mm -hmm. For Elohim, no. Now he's still on that Elohim thing. Nothing wrong with Elohim, but this is not a case of Elohim. This is a case of Yahweh Elohim. You know what I mean? It's 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 not just the father, but it's God the Father, almost like that. But it's He who be who He be, the Elohim. He says, "For Elohim doth know." You know, the Elohim term can apply to man. If you overs, man who is in the image and after the likeness is the Elohim of the earth. That's why it says, "I've said that y'all are <laughs> gods." In the ancient. Yeah, Elohim is plural, but when used of Yahweh, of Jehovah, of the Hebrew Trinity, it's used in the singularity. So it's almost like grammatically speaking, it's grammatically so-called, quote, incorrect. In other words, you're using a plural, I mean, a, sing, a singular verb to refer to a plural noun. You know, like if I said, if I said, if I said my father's. My father's he is very loving. You mean your father? No, my father's. It, it, it implies like I have like multiple. multiple father. But then when I say he, it's gonna make you wonder like wait, 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 wait. You know, you know. Um, um, my wives, my wives, man. She, 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 she's wonderful. You say well, but you say wives. I'm, I'm trying to show ones just by hearing and hopefully ones will find out more for themselves. This is how the, the Hebrew rings. So when he says Elohim, he takes off Yahuwah. He says, for Elohim doth know in the day y'all eat thereof. Now here's what the subtle trick is. Is the Nahash talking of Yahuwah or is the Nahash talking of them and Adam? Think about it. When he's saying Elohim in this sense, is he talking of Yahuwah? But no, he, he didn't say Yahuwah. The serpent doesn't say Yahuwah one time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He just says Elohim. He says, for Elohim doth know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and y'all shall be as Elohim. See, see, notice the word God's there is the same word. It, 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 as God people say but it's lowercase g not big g that's that's Gentile foolishness in the Hebrew it's not a small Aleph you know what I mean and a big Aleph it's still Aleph is Aleph you know what I mean and Elohim knowing good and evil knowing now knowing here you, the word knowing is not just an intellectual exercise but it's like you know when you know something by experience that's what he's saying. You're going to know this by experience. It's like, he who feels it. <laughs> he knows it. You know what I'm saying? He who feels it. That's what he's kind of saying. 
right? And it says, and when the woman, verse 6, saw that the tree was good. Now, all of this is showing the free will of the woman. And then when Adam does what he does, it shows the free will of Adam. Even her conversation with the, the serpent, the Nahash, is showing her free will. Who's making her? Is, is, is Yahweh Elohim making her? Is Adam making her? We don't see that. He said something, right, to her. And she, 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 she couldn't she have just not said nothing? She, she could have not said nothing. She said, oh, oh, I'm not going to answer this and said, can you, can you answer the, the, the Nakash, the serpent and Nakash? You know, you know, like, can you answer him, please? You know, so she has free will. In other words, she had the ability to choose, right? And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, did it say that, that Elohim made her, that the serpent made her look at the tree? No, she saw the tree after she heard the reasoning. The reasoning is going into her heart, into her mind into a feeling and she's now looking at it and that it was pleasant to the eyes doesn't that sound familiar my brother doesn't that sound like that verse earlier in verse 9 where it says out of the ground made Yahweh Elohim does it say out of the ground God made God made the God to grow no it says the Lord God so the serpent takes the respect off of off of the function of, of the creator of the power of the God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight every tree notice something what makes you, you, you just said it there the Gnostics you said it there the right Gnostics the true Gnostics you said it there when you said that the, the, the serpent's trick the Nakash's trick was making what was was making the tree of the knowledge of good and evil seem more desirable than what it really is because you saw how he slipped it in there he slipped it in there right by actually like 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 are you there yeah oh, okay yeah no i thought i heard a, a beep yeah he actually flips it in there when he starts talking about um you would not die and knowing good and evil he kind of slips in there obliquely not indirectly Right now, she looks at it, and notice what she sees is what, almost the same words as we have in the previous chapter, where it says that every tree that is pleasant to the sight. That means there was more than one tree. Now she saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. You have it reversed here in Genesis two and nine. Um, every tree that was pleasant to the eyes and good for food. All right. And it's a mindset, you know. It's a mindset, and what he did was change our mindset. Mm-hmm. Because it seems to me, it seems to me to be that somehow the instruction of Adam was incomplete or weak, and even in this dialogue, he should have speak, he should have spoke. You know what I mean? I don't see nothing in the Bible that says don't cut the serpent off when he's talking. <laughs> you know, I don't see that. Thou shall not. But notice, and a tree to be desired. Notice that, Hamad. That's where Hamad, you know, Hamad like Mohammed, Hamad. That's the very same word right there, Hamad. A lot of Muslims will find this word Hamad that is translated as desire and in other parts of the Bible and other parts, and they'll say these are prophecies of Mohammed. I just find that to be interesting. It means to desire, to covet, to take pleasure in, to delight in. Now, it's not a bad word. You understand? But it can have certain bad context. Like right here. He created in her a desire. It's almost like commercials. You know how men were smoking cigarettes back in the days? And how they, they, they caused women to smoke cigarettes too? Because they made the cigarette be as something very liberating, very yeah. feminizing. So it became desirable to do so. If a woman felt she wanted to be feminine and more liberating, she'd just take up, strike a, what you call them? They made that more desirable. Because at first it was just men that were doing it, basically. Women, most women wasn't doing that. Unless what they, they did was they made the, um, the leading ladies in the, the big, the big, blast, the big um, blockbuster movies to she, all be smoking cigarettes. So exactly. So you start to see all these, you know, and uh, it, 
actresses smoking cigarettes that made it cool, you know, for all the young girls to look up to her, you know? And not just because of the actress, you're on point there, but it was also because in those roles, the women were like bold, were liberated, were, you know, I mean, things that were breaking out of the convention of how society was. You know what I'm saying? That the women were like, 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 um, like the strong woman in the movie. You know what I'm saying? You know, the sexy woman in the movie. The liberated woman in the movie. The woman that could 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 give the man a run for his proverbial money. To make well, that's part of the, the, the biggest um, device used for decades now to help change the mindset of people, you know, because we do have a free will, right? But your free will is based on your mindset of how you're going to operate with that free will. So, when they desensitize you to certain things, because at one point you was against this and now you, like, you don't bother you no more. So that means you become desensitized to certain things that you know to be wrong. You know these things to be immoral. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. But you have become so desensitized to these things that... Wow. Yes, yeah. You know, you're basically accepting it now. Mm. And that's a defeatist mentality. That's a defeatist choice. But, 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 you know, but then... Your free will is being... Being, being manipul highly manipulated. But, 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 but then it's no longer free. It's, it's, no. It's now... It's enslaved. No, no. It's, no, you're paying a price. And it's enslaved too. Because you're doing that and really though you know what you know, you're doing something opposite like you're a slave. Think about it. In other words, a free a free is opposite of slave. Right? And at first you have the ability to decide without fear or favor. Right? And then because of fear and favor, you know what I mean? To people. Like sometimes people won't do things because of a certain person. Like in some situation, I don't have free will to say whatever. Well, I do have free will to say whatever I want to say around even my parents. But I choose not to exercise it out of honor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I think the trick is even them talking about free will all the time. Them calling it free. Why don't they just say will? Do people have will? Do they have will? Period. But they add this free will idea and over exaggerate it as though if you choose something bad and get burned for it you didn't have free will <laughs> but, that's the, but the, the people who seem to have a problem I, that's probably what they have a problem with they want to have free will to do whatever the corruption they want and then no consequence supposed to come with it because they have free will they just do what they want See, and that's they don't walk that way. And, and that it's like it's like the simplest law in one of the simple laws in creation sowing and reaping they don't want to recognize that as we sow according to the basic principle of that law that legal algorithm we reap there's a consequence in other words you know what I'm saying so that idea of free will I think it's because they call it free will that people don't recognize sometimes we make our wills obedient right to certain influences that is not good and the more we but, do that we get captured by that which is not good but free will means you have like a responsibility as well not because you have have something mean you have to use it then. you know that, that's true that, that's true you have a mouth to speak but in some cases you say I, i'm not gonna I'm not going to exactly. say nothing. <laughs> you know, so not because you have it means you have to use it, you know? So Eve... It, 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 you know, it's with discretion. You know, use your free will with discretion. Mm, that's a good point, being that what we're talking about here. Because it seems like the woman, the Isha, right, she basically did exercise her free will. And even Adam, the man, he exercised his free will by not saying nothing. But yes. There's a, but there's a, and going along with it. It's almost like somebody just go along with your what you you know what they know better. Silence is a free will. <laughs> what, say that again. Silence is a free will. <laughs> mm. And speaking is a free will too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's also the intent, the reason why. Now, notice a, a tree to be desired to make one wise. 
So it's a tree to be desired to make ones wise. Now this word wise is interesting here. Because you know how we talk about the Hebrew Chokma in, in Greek is Sophia and in Amharic is Tibeb. The word here is not in the Hebrew, it's not Chokma. It's not the word that we have elsewhere in the scripture and Proverbs and elsewhere and what Yeshua Yesu speaks about Jesus Christ, he says that wisdom is justified by all of her children, right? That wisdom being a, like a maternal, a mother principle, right? This is not that word. It's the word sakal, sakal. Sakal means to be prudent, to be circumspect, to wisely understand something. Um, sakal is like when they talk about like David, David expressed wisdom. It says that he, like to behave intelligently. In that sense it's not the other wisdom we could get into that but I just want to point out that this is not the word Hukma in the sense of wisdom proper this is a sense of like and uh, like an aspect of wisdom but not wisdom itself like what what one gets from wisdom right because in a sense the Isha the woman was the man's wisdom if you always what I'm saying right almost externalized Right? She took of the fruit thereof. Now she took. At this point, up to this point right here, and did eat. Up to this point right here, from what is written, from what is written, there should not have been any judgment on her. Up to this point. But you know what? The covering is, a, she's about to get uncovered. Remember it says that the man is the covering for the woman, in that sense? Watch what happens. And gave also to her husband with her. I would like to say, and he dropped it. And he dropped it on the ground. No. <laughs> and he did eat. Now, once the last four words is what now sets this whole thing. Because remember, she is of him, right? And now she already had went this far and did what she did. But still, because she was not told this directly and the command was to him like like individually you know what I mean once now he eats that was the whole point of the whole exercise of the serpent that was it that was it right that's why it says the eyes of them both were opened you know your eyes can be open but it's always not a good thing sometimes you know what I'm saying sometimes you know there's things that I have seen few things that no way I know I wish I could have unseen it <laughs> I don't know about anyone else but no way I know you know I, I wish I could have unseen it I hear you there you know what I'm saying you know I mean, it, it's, it's not the worst thing I've seen it but they, because I saw those things it opened my eyes not just the eyes of my like flesh but the eyes of my mind the eyes of my soul my feeling my emotion my psyche you know, sometimes in ways that, you know, I could have done without it. I mean, now that I know these things, basically these things that were not good, evil. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm wiser for the experience, you know what I mean, in Yeshua. But if I would have choose, I would have chose different. But anyway, the eyes of, of, of them both were open. So that implies that were they blind? They couldn't have been blind because she saw the tree. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> she saw the tree. But now you're seeing something else in the tree. Like you said, shifting the mental perspective. Like it says, let this mind be in you. And they knew. And they knew. Notice, it's only after he eats that the eyes of them both were open. It doesn't even say after she eats that her eyes were open. But only after he eats. That seals the deal. I got them both. They're a couple. They're one. That's what the... The, the Nahash said, yeah, I got them, gotcha. The eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. Pause. You mean the great knowledge here is that they were naked? Right? It's not really saying that they were, well, it's saying that they were naked, but the implication is that they were ashamed. Remember, go back to Genesis chapter 2, the last verse. It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So when it says right here that they knew that they were naked, they knew the evil, the, the shame of being naked. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a little baby. A little baby be naked, right? Or whatnot. And then we, 
But then as they get older, we get older, you know, we like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we're, we're coming more to this knowledge of, of the positives and the negatives. And so they knew that they were naked. In other words, they knew their nakedness in a different way than in Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Genesis chapter 2 verse 25 it says the key word and were not ashamed and were not ashamed in fact it's shifting that's, a, that, that's not a shift of mindset again that's another shift of mindset you remember the psalm we had psalm 119 and I went through that and now I can see this in a different in a different sense where it says where it says where he says um it was in, was it in the Hebrew or the English where it says about that he will not be ashamed. Yeah, in verse 6, um, Psalm 119, verse 6, where he, where he says, Then shall I not be ashamed. Well, he says before that, he says, he, he says, Thou hast commanded to keep thy precepts diligently. Right? And his testimony, in other words, to keep what Josh says diligently. Right? Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed. When I have respect to all thy commandments. Pause. Psalm 119 verse 6. Where it says. Then shall I not be ashamed. When I have respect to all thy commandments. Now in this incident. I'm sure Adam. Maybe Adam first chanted those words. Who knows. You know what I'm saying. Or chanted some words like that. Because now they knew that they were naked. No what they knew was shame. Because it goes on. And they sued fig leaves. Together. And made themselves aprons. In the Eastern Church, the older church, the more African church, African Shemitic church of the early times, you know, um, before the Roman church rose up and took over, so to speak, um, that they they say that the fruit was figs. Some even say figs because they, they reason that why would they use fig leaves? I'm not saying that it was a fig tree, but some even say that right here and then that but it's an interesting reason because of what Yeshua and that fig tree remember the fig tree that had a lot of had a lot of um leaves and it said that Yeshua went to to get figs from it and when he got close to it he saw that there was no fruit and what he do he cursed the tree why he said because it was a deceptive tree because usually when the, the tree has the leaves on it it got fruit you know what I mean? You know, imagine if the tree one has leaves, that's fruit, and now you go look at this tree and you say, oh, let me get some of the fruit, and you don't see nothing there. <laughs> you know, that's like a Satan tree. That's a deceptive tree. What, what, what kind of thing is this? And they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim. Notice here, in verse 8, now the, the narrator says, Jehovah Elohim. It didn't say they heard the voice of Elohim. They heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the garden. Notice, did it say that they heard the footsteps? <laughs> it heard the trod. It heard the sandals. It said the voice. The voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the garden. Right? I would even say since voice is connected with the word, this is like to say... Yeshua within the pre-incarnate sense the word the voice walking in the garden in the cool of the day in the evening time and Adam and his wife they hid themselves why they're hiding why they're hiding why they're feeling shame they know something see before they were naked but did not know shame you, you get that they, they didn't know no shame something shifted in their mind it's like somebody who is who is traumatized or sometime abused no, I traumatized let me, let, let me tell you how I'm looking at it. Come, come. Like you said before, right? You use a baby tongue. Before that, before the devil intervention, <laughs> they were more in a pubic, like a puberty stage, you know, like more of a childlike stage as far as how they were viewing everything. After that, it came to a, a kind of a maturity wake up <laughs> yeah. you know they wake up to certain realities you know this thing wake up to certain realities so whatever take place you know people have different narratives of what they you know the, you know the tree the apple wherever you know people have different narratives whatever your narrative is after that took place it was a waking up of maturity mm. 
and they have reality of certain things like they know they're naked, they know what this is for, and you know, mm. you know like they know what you for no more, and you know, mm-hmm. it's just like if you watch little children growing up as little children, anybody who grew up in a big family from a certain age to a certain age, the little boy and little girl running around in panty and naked together and thing until a certain age. They, they, they get to know in the something. same tub, everything. Little boy and little girl bathing in the same tub, everything. Until a certain age. After a certain age, that get put to a stop. Mm-hmm. Because then they are so-called, we call it maturing. Yes. Right. But it, it's an interesting narrative right here because throughout the Hebrew way of looking at this we reason on this a lot and see a lot of wisdom in it but it's not like a lot of the Christians look at this to be um, like like we don't look at it as so much all bad or all good but more like it is what it is and what can you learn from what it is you know what I'm saying yeah. others would say well if we never ate of that well that that would but that would be good that would be a whole other experience who knows what that experience would be but i love how you explained it in the sense of children being young bathing or whatnot together don't know no shame right and then later on they know shame but see shame is an aspect of guilt that's what people have to recognize shame is an aspect of guilt you know, we think that there's a good thing in shame. Maybe we don't mean shame, shame. Maybe we use that word and we think of it as something else in our mind. But I'm talking about in the literal sense of shame. Shame is not really a good thing. You should be ashamed of yourself. Why do you think people said that? At one time people said that people actually were ashamed. You know, because people were more programmable back then. Somebody said, you should be ashamed of yourself. And you hear me say that, and now you begin to think, yourself, oh, I'm, I'm shamed. You're like, wow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's not a good thing, and shame is an aspect of guilt. And guilt, how can I say? Guilt is a hard thing to get rid of out of the soul state. Guilt is a, is a because guilt is not always relative to what was done. Like we said, guiltiness rests upon their conscience. It's not always relative to what was done. You know what I'm saying? And it seems as though this shame and guilt is only done away with, you know, truly by the Almighty and by His means, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Almost like He has to take it away. He has to He has to wipe it. He has to erase it. In other words, it's beyond our reach. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody be like, I'm not ashamed about that, but sometimes it's really hard. It's, it's the grace of God that really removes that shame and that guilt even many of us may have done things and people have done things in their past or whatever and they don't do it anymore maybe they were tricked into it. maybe when it was young or whatever and sometimes even though they have forsaken it they still feel ashamed about that thing although they're not doing that and though they was in ignorance when they did it you see what I'm saying I'm just trying to say how strong is shame that's why they hid themselves from the face of Yahuwah Elohim among the trees of the garden you know what I mean they hid themselves they basically it almost seems based on the text that they try to make themselves like a tree the tree to disappear mm-hmm. ah to fade to fade into to fade into the background you know now people try to try to try to pun Jehovah here where it says and Yahuwah Elohim called to Adam and said where art thou Right? Almost like he didn't know where he was. But in the Hebrew, it takes on a little forceful sense. Like like lamentation. Where are you? It's almost like the Eich. It's almost like, hey, like like what? It, it's not just where are you, but it has a sense of like, like what happened? You know, like when somebody said, what happened? Even that tone of voice brings out the sense of, you know, like, like they, 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 they don't know. Or they want you to explain what happened. But we already know that he already knows. It's like a parent may ask you what happened in a situation because they want to see what, you want to an- what you're going to answer. You know, yes, how, you're right. ah, yeah, how you're going to answer, yeah, or how truthful you're going to be. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. Now notice, he hid himself with his wife among the trees of the garden but he answers that I heard your voice 
in the garden. <laughs> you know what I mean? Basically, he heard the voice enter into the garden. And he was afraid. Now, fear. Think about fear now. Right? Think about the word fear. Right? And I was, uh, and I was, I was afraid. It could also be translated as I was reverent, like in a kind of a highly religious sense. And it's interesting here, you know, the difference between spirituality. Before this, they were in spirituality. Now, in a sense, they, are, they must be given religion or a way that they have to obey. If you know what I'm saying. In order to see who could be saved. You know what I mean? In other words, they were given one command. He was given one command. It already gone here. He says, because I was naked and I hid myself. But remember, after the woman came first in Genesis 2 and 25, th they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now he says, because I was naked. Notice, notice something. He don't say, because we were naked. Right? He didn't even say, I'm over here. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm right here. I was just trying to fade into these trees here. You know? Listen, and, he was looking up for his cell phone and jump. Because I was naked. Yeah, he was looking up for his cell phone and jump. From but, jump speak. Notice. He was looking up for his cell He was told at first. He was commanded. He didn't really say nothing while the whole dialogue was going on. Right? You know he was in trouble. He says, That's what I'm you. You know the kind of trouble he was in. That's why he was looking up for himself from Jump Street. Do you remember what he said? He, he, he said, we, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hit, our, we hit ourselves. I'm over here. You know, because <laughs> I was afraid. I, I'm over here. H here I am. Notice how when others are called out by Yahweh, notice like Abraham and the rest of them, they say, here I am. Notice they say, here I am, right? Here I am. You know, Moses called, here I am. Samuel, here I am. You know what I mean? Instead, he responds and says, I heard thy voice. Notice, notice, notice. The question is, where are you? I'm over here. Here I am. He doesn't say here I am. You know, he just says what he heard, how that made him feel, and what his condition is, and why he hid himself. He, notice, he did, Yahuwah didn't say, why did you hide yourself? And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Now, here's the key thing. Here's the key thing. He asked, who told you? Who told you? Literally, who told you? That's a, that's a deep question. You think about it for yeah. a moment. Who told you? You know who told him this? It was the reptilian mind. It was the reptilian mind in him that told him. It was yeah. that serpent mind, that instinctual mind. You know, because they said, the, they said the, the reptilian part of our brain is that fight or flight, that survival mechanism in man. You know? And they recognize that man has like three brains, right? And one of those three brains is known as the, you know, the reptilian, you know? And that's like the root part, you know, that's the root part of our brains. Like, like all other animals have it, you know? Yeah, I want to show ones this right here, that root part. And it's not necessarily bad in that sense, but must be tamed. In, the, in their sense, as it was, it was good. Right? And once they now eat of this tree, right, it's getting affected. You know? So it's that fight or flight. Right? And then he asks, Who told thee that thou was naked? But if you think about it, who did tell him that he was naked? Because he already was naked, it says that they both were naked in Genesis two and nineteen. So who told him that he was naked? Because they wasn't ashamed before, it wasn't afraid before. And then ask him, Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And what the man say? He says, The woman. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Notice he could say the serpent told what well, the serpent didn't really tell him. Notice the serpent didn't really tell him. <laughs> not the not the serpent that was so called, if we look at it like this, on the outside. You know, it wasn't the serpent that was on the outside. It was that serpent on the inside. Because that, that same part of us, that's the core part of us, is what makes us do instinctual things. Almost like the animals. It's like make us do instinctual things. You know, and sometimes we just kind of like... Met. If you look at how the, the, the world and the media is programming us, it basically programs the reptilian mind. 
it's, you try to keep the reptilian mind always foremost because they don't want you to think your logical mind all right you know don't want to don't want you to think with that aspect of your mind and then he says the woman whom thou gave it so there was two questions so he's saying that the woman told him notice because remember the question was who told you that she was naked right he responds right to that first question the woman whom thou gavest to be with me right and he says hast thou eaten of the tree whereof i commanded thee thou shouldst not eat second question no, notice when it says that i whereof i commanded thee he didn't say that i commanded y'all See, if he said, I commanded y'all, I would have to back up on that. But I, I could move forward on that because he's still speaking specifically to Adam. Not you and her, but to you, singular, you, man, you. Right? That thou, the I, shouldest not eat. So who told him? I guess he's saying the woman whom thou gavest to be with me. She gave me of the tree and I did eat. So he finally answers the second question after he implicates her kind of twice. Like it really don't matter whether she gave him of the gave him or not. <laughs> the part that matters is whether he eats. You know, that that's the yeah, that's the that's part that, that Yeah, it don't matter whether he touched the tree, he brushed up on the tree, whether she grabbed the fruit, threw it to him, and he threw it back to her, and they play ball with it. It didn't say thou should not play ball with the fruit of the tree is not a good eat. No, it says thou should not eat of it. So he finally admits. I have to say this right here. Some of you know I love this part here because it just contrasts. Men, mind them. Let's learn from this. Yahweh Elohim said to the woman. Now I'll speak to the woman. Notice how women are, right? Most women, right? You know, I say wise. She she has some wisdom here in how she keeps her answer. What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, all in the same sentence, right? All in the same verse. The serpent beguiled me. He tricked me. Right? And I did eat. And this is the word nasha. That's the word that people confuse with nasa. He nasa'd me. He nasha'd me. And she kept it, she kept it 100. 100, not 101, not 99.1, 99.23, not 99.9 .9 even. <laughs> she kept it 100, you know what I mean? And and notice something, when he turns to the serpent, to the reptilian, Yahweh Elohim said to the serpent of Nakash, because thou has done this. <laughs> did I ask no question, right? No. What, what did you do? Why did you do this? I didn't want them to eat. No, no. Yahweh Elohim, the voice is not like that. Right? He says, because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle. Notice, the only one that is cursed is the serpent. Adam is not cursed, and the woman is not cursed. Even the fact that it's talking about that she will have give birth to children with difficulty. That's not a curse in the sense of he cursing her. He's telling her the consequence the consequence of this what the consequence is going to be because before the consequence would be when it was time for her to give birth it would be fairly easy it would be easy it would be good good remember everything up to that point was good that was ordained for them by Yahweh Elohim everything was good 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 right and on that was cursed see the grace was that he revealed to the man and the woman his wife his Isha, you know, he revealed to them what the consequences would be. But here to the serpent, he says, you're, you, because you've done this. I know you done did this. you curse above all cattle, right? Above every beast of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and thus shall you eat all the days of thy life. In a sense, thus shall you eat is almost pointing to the creation of, or, or rather, not the creation, the formation. Genesis chapter 2 is formation, right? Genesis chapter 1 is creation. The afar, that you would eat the afar. That in other words, you would eat man. Man will be your food. You'll feed on him. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Look at that, right? Enmity between thee and the woman. You know, because of this, I make sure when I have to come out on something on principle because of woman, right? Or two women, I really try to check myself. You know why? Because part of the curse on the Nakash is that there will be hatred and hard feelings 
right? <laughs> Between, <laughs> right, the and the woman. You see what I'm saying? So the whole yeah. down pressure of woman is because of this same nakash. Firstly, right, because the enmity of man, right, there'll be enmity, right, you know, to the woman. And between her seed, right, thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise, or really it should, it should read, he shall bruise your head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Here's the interesting thing. I'm just going to put this on the table right here. We'll come back to it. In the in the in the Gutter's Bible, the serpent is feminine. J just to pause for the cause on that. I've heard that before. In the Amharic, the serpent seems to be somewhat transgenderish. I kid you not. Right? The way the serpent speaks and the way the different the different male female aspects of what's being said is is brought out in the hebrew right although the serpent overtly appears to be male the serpent has what we call i'll drop the b for censorship purpose the serpent has an itch the serpent is an itch if you get me <laughs> the hebrew brings out this kind of sense the way the serpent speaks right even though he is said to be he his way of speaking is like he's a itch he's a itch as serpent <laughs> you know and to the like a, chameleon. like a chameleon because what he does he appeals to her femininity yeah the chameleon he appeals strongly to the femininity you know what i'm saying in a sense where adam could have spoke up but adam probably was you know he was taking all this but what adam didn't do he didn't point out the Nakash, the serpent. Like, I would try to think that if I was me, I know we messed up. You know, we, baby, we messed up, right? Um, it was the serpent that did it. Someone speaking to her, and, you know, I forgot to say, I should have said something. But I was just amazed all this garbage was coming out of his mouth, but it just caught us. <laughs> anyway, we can't undo what's done, right? To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. And thy conception, right? Yes, I will greatly multiply because you desire to know something, right? You desire to know something, right? Before it was the good of childbirth, but because you desire to know something, you're going to know the good and the bad, right? So therefore, because before this, there was only good appointed to both of y'all. There was only good appointed to that. After this, he had to be feared to his word and to even that tree and had to allow for the influx of the experience. And here, balance. Exactly. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. What's interesting is that I noticed this, that a lot of women do throughout the history time had difficult childbirths. Some of them we know have died in childbirth. But what's interesting is that some women testify, not all, not all, not all. You know what I'm saying? So there's still that grace because I'm thinking that if he's the one that's doing this, right? Therefore, he's the one that can lessen it too. You see what I'm saying? In, yes, so in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Right? Now the word desire here is not the same as the word desire elsewhere. The desire a couple of verses earlier. I just want to point that out. The English... You said they shift it, make you think that both desire is the same word, even in the Hebrew. They're not the same words in the Hebrew. Thy desire, teshuka, teshuka is a longing, a craving, like the craving of a man for a woman or the craving of a woman for a man. It almost can also be like the same word, teshuka, is in the animal kingdom, a beast to eat something up, a beast to, to devour. The original sense of teshuk, uh, this desire, is is like stretching out after. Like you're stretching yourself out after something. You're trying to get that woman there, you know what I mean? So you're stretching yourself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're desiring her, longing. So here it says that your desire to the woman shall be to thy husband, right? And he shall, here's the key, he shall mashal, mashal in the Hebrew is to have dominion 
is to rule. But mashal in Hebrew is a parable too. A mashal is a parable, right? To be like one says, creating man in his image after his likeness. It brings up that sense that the man has a responsibility to cut a certain, um, how can I say, a rule. You know what I mean? A reign, right? To have a certain power. And the power here is speaking about the power that Adam did not exercise. See, he could have he said this. Alpha. Yeah, he notice. Alpha went away. Exactly. So what's actually is, is his alpha went away and he doesn't say to the man. You see, people say this is sexist. This would only be sexist in the true sense if it was said to the man. But notice how deep this is. That this is not even said to the man. It's said to the woman. It's almost like a man speaking to the woman saying that, you know, you're going to have to help him out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to help him out. Because really, what happened in the scene was that he allowed her to rule over in that scene. But in that yeah. scene that she was ruling over, she got tricked. She got deceived. She, or she got a hit. She caught a hit, right? And here he is saying this to the woman and to Adam what was said. Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife. Notice here, it makes it a bad thing. Here, in Genesis. But in the story of Abraham, right? And Hagar and that whole situation, Yahuwah Elohim said to Abraham, Abraham, listen to the voice of your wife. So what does the scripture well, see, teach? But well, the difference in that is, in this one, he chose between what the father tell you and what your wife tell you. Aye, yes, that yes, the yes. And in and in the other scene, he was choosing between what his heart felt for his for his for his um, other woman and his son, his fleshy firstborn Ishmael, and what Sarah was saying, according to the prophecy. Sarah was trying, she kept her eyes on the prophecy. That's why she told her, him to kick her out. You know, because she's going to be unruly and not have no respect. You need to hit the wilderness. You need to go. Because remember, when she ran away first, Hagar, the angel told her to submit to, to Sarah. Sarah's the mistress. Stop acting like the mistress. So what's interesting, you're right, is that when he said, listen to your voice of your wife with Sarah, it's because... In that case, Abraham was not to follow his heart. His heart was on the wrong side. You know what I'm nope. saying? And, and what you said is that here, he was listening to his wife, the voice of his wife and her reasonment and everything, because she didn't really tell him to eat, but her reasonment back and forth, this is what he got out of it, right? And has eaten of the tree which I commanded thee. Notice again, it doesn't say which I commanded ye. I commanded you. In Genesis chapter 2, right? Saying, thou shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground. Look at this here. You know what the ground is called in the Hebrew, bro? Adama. Adama. The Adama. The oh. word for ground is the Adama. So who was Adam's mama? Mama Earth? Adama? Right? <laughs> we know his father was Elohim. Yahuwah Elohim. But here we have... The Adama, so curse will be the Adama, the ground, for your sake. For, it says, in sorrow, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Come in the garden, they will have fruit without having to deal with thorns and thistles. You know what I mean? They probably would have to deal with it, but it wouldn't harm the fruit. They didn't have to redo no work, just had to dress it, just keep it. Keep keep it good, you know what I mean? And thou shall eat herb. <laughs> thou shall eat herb, like vegetation, to say. Thou shall eat herb of the. Oh man, this thing went off right here. Oh man, what does it say right there? I, I touched something right here. Thou shall eat herb of the. Let me get my hard copy right here. Thou shall eat herb of the field, in the sweat of thy face. Right in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. You have to work, you have to labor, right? Till thou return to the ground, 
for out of it was thou taken for dust look at the key here dust remember the serpent gonna eat what serpent gonna bite the what dust for dust thou art so it's also saying that the serpent you're gonna have to be battling against this um, this godless and cruel dragon here the serpent and to dust thou shalt return so that free will Right now, you can see that their free will is not free. In other words, their free will, like their free will is not free because they already have become, in a sense, enslaved to another reality. They become enslaved to another reality, right? And that's where those curses, you know, you know, the curses that would, um, you know, that was brought out. In fact, the only ones that was cursed here, Eve was warned. The woman was warned of the consequences but the serpent was cursed directly and the ground was cursed indirectly right for for um adam's sake you know what i mean so um yeah man yeah man just just uh the reptilian the was free will being how you jack is like the matrix notice something this man has three brains basically there's a triune trinity brain any of y'all look up the Trinity brain. It's called the triune brain. I'm just showing this right here on the on the outro here. The reptilian part is the part that decides. The mammalian part that links with Eve, the feminine side, the mammalian part, as it were, like women have mammaries. Men have them too, but it's the woman mammaries that that do the do, you know, in the creation order of things. Right? That's the part that feels. But where Adam should have been operating from is the higher brain part and that front to low part that's the part that thinks you know what i mean that's the part that thinks so even when we look at the brain and we look at what is written in this this area of genesis we look at these three brains the reptilian part is about survival and fear you know because the serpent was about his or their seed and it feared adam right and then the cast upon Adam and his Isha, right? His psychic counterpart, survival and fear, right? That's the reptilian brain. The, the, the part of the brain that links with the Eve part of the story, the woman part, is the mammal, the mammalian brain. That's the emotional part of our brain. That's the part that seeks pleasure and seeks to avoid pain. There's a part of us that seeks pleasure and seeks to avoid pain. So notice what happened. It's like they sell us on something that's too good to be true. And once we buy that, we start to get pain that is too bad to be, <laughs> too hard to be endured. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, and then the higher brain, this is the real part that we have been evolving spiritually and psychologically over thousands of years to get to the approximate level of where we fell from is the rational part. That's the logic and thinking. The logic and thinking. The only thing I can say, based on the triune brain, is what was man thinking? What was his logic? So Adam, the logical, rational brain. Eve, the mammalian brain. The serpent, that reptilian part. So the serpent was able, being subtle, to tap in to that mammalian instinct. The survival and the fear. You know, the fight, fight or flight. Notice something, after they found out what happened, that's the crisis part of the brain. Yeah. If you don't eat of this, if you don't eat of this, because Elohim knows that in the day that you eat of it. Now, some people say, well, that's true, because later on it says that the man has become as one of us. To know good and evil. Now, to know this means also to be able to experience it. Because they have, because they have the knowledge of it. Because you have the knowledge right. of it. Yeah. Yeah. You experience it, like like the, like your example about the young children. You know, they don't have no shame then. You know, even though they were naked then, but now something has happened in their thinking, their thought. You know what I mean? That now the same thing doesn't breed that other reaction. They're outside of the garden of innocency, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever people say why why didn't he just let don't you know what just happened they just ucked up 
They're in a deadly way. Imagine that if they were to go and eat of this other tree of life, they would be in um, what they call like the catch 22 in a sense. They would be in a real catch 22. It's like you'll be living forever while dying forever and experiencing the pain of evil forever. You know what I mean? It would create almost like a kind of a, a weird kind of a loop. So actually what was said in verse 22 was a mercy. You know, notice in Genesis 3, 2, 2. You know about, you heard about skull and bones, right? Yes. I'm going to leave people off with this one right here. Skull and bones, skull and bones. You know, the skull and bones, what is their number? Anybody know what their number is? Skull and bones? If, if anybody looks up skull and bones, right, and look at their symbol, that skull and bones symbol, right, you'll notice what their number is. I want to bring this up so everybody can see this right here, skull and bones. Okay, okay, skull and bones, let me put um, Illuminati, right, Illuminati, right, because it's going to show you skull and bones like just the medical side, skull and bones. It's the number. All right. And remember who is one of the ones who told you this first. All right. Although the spirit told me, so I wasn't the first to know this. But notice it is Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Think about it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 is where we get the expulsion from the garden. All right. It's in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 is where we get the exit the exiting from the garden and notice on what terms the reasons why some people say this is bad but actually that's a misreading of it it was actually a mercy it was actually a mercy you know what i mean because they already had fallen you know they were already in a different in a sunken place you know that's that's the guilt that's the you know now being able to experience some things. Okay, I have it here on the screen. Skull and Bones number is 322. They give you a lot of reasons for that. But here we point to the scripture. To cipher the serpent. You know, the serpent seed. And Yahuwah Elohim said, The man has now become like one of us. Knowing good and evil. Now people say, well the serpent was right about that. Well, yeah. It didn't, uh, uh, Elohim, Yahweh Elohim can handle that. He said he create, he's good and he create evil, so he can handle that. You know, if you create something, you can uncreate or do whatever you want with it. You got master, don't master you. But what about man? He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Or in a better context, he must not take of this at this time. He cannot, he should not take of this at this time. And notice, it's not even saying that the man and the woman. I want you to check that there. It just says that the man, right? Notice what it says, the man has become. You say, well, what about the woman? Hasn't she become? No, on a certain level, the woman or, or womanity, based on history and what I know of biblical and otherwise, has been victimized, the enmity, if you understand what I'm saying. The, the man has now become as one of us. It's speaking about him, he. It's not... important to me that it seems like um, no matter how you go around this story, right? <laughs> Come with it. <laughs> it puzzled me, oh, this tree of life day, this guy now this time, and they ain't never eat. <laughs> eat from this thing, and and it seemed like the minute they both are gonna eat from this thing, the devil show up and trick them to eat something else. <laughs> you never know; they, they might have been considering that, and then he walk up and then then buck up, strike up a conversation with the woman. You know, and you know what's interesting about the skull and bones. You remember when Jezebel, when Jezebel was thrown off of the wall later on in the Bible. It says that the only thing that remained of her was her skull and a couple of bones. I always find that to be extremely interesting, you know, but that kind of links us here because the Jezebel on a certain level will be the Nahash. <laughs> the Jezebel will be the serpent. 
and not because the, it, it, she's a woman, no. It's because, you know, uh, Satan is a biatch. <laughs> is the original. And Jezebel was a cunning one. Ah. And what she did, she used her husband's authority to do things he wanted to do, but was too weak as a king to do it himself. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you got to have the force on that one right there. I just saw something there. Sorry about that, Adam, but, you know, we're in the last Adam now. You know? <laughs> yes, my brother. Um, I know there's more on this right here, but, Chan, how, how, how wow, we're at 105 right here. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, but uh, the free will, you know, if you're free to will, you have free will, you know. The consequences. It's the consequences you have to factor into the choice, the choice factor. In fact, we like to explain more about the choice factor. In fact, what I like to pick up on this as we go forward, y'all willing, is the cannabis matrix. I might send the eye a PDF. If I didn't send the eye a hard copy, you know, because um, the eye got some of the other books because it's important. Ones and ones can check out. I think we have the PDF available. If not, we'll put that up there. It should be available. The Cannabis Matrix. Because in the Cannabis Matrix, there's some interesting reasonings like on cannabis and, you know, which tree we're talking about. And it's kind of interesting as a reasonment. But I don't want to get into it right now. But brothers right right there they had a choice you know what i mean and all the time that they was in the garden you know potentially they could have you know what i mean you know or he could have you know because he you remember the before the woman was there he must have been walking around here by but you know what i have to say in innocency maybe he just didn't know <laughs> no, I, he just didn't know you know what i mean not. He just didn't know. It's interesting because this whole thing also kind of explains how growing up in childhood and those experiences almost like the beginning and the Bible. You know what I mean? It's almost like that whole thing. Like when they say like children are born and they're in the more perfect state. You know, when they come in this world in principle, generally speaking in principle. But as we get older and we get to know... <laughs> Good and evil, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's like when Lil Tim hits each other with money. Like you have fifteen cents, right? So you got like 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 five nickels, and I have twenty-five cents. I have a quarter, a solid quarter. I younger than you, so you gonna come to me and tell me, yo, I gonna give you my three money for your one money? And I thinking, what? That's a good thing. <laughs> Never heard that one there. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm gonna give you these three money for that one money. Yeah. Okay. But my one money, one more, and your three money. But I don't know that. Yeah, I might have to. That's a good one. I might have to upgrade that. It's like you got a twenty, right? And I got three ones. <laughs> I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you three of these. Look, it's three. That's only two. You see, it's two, and zero is nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what the devil do you know <laughs> and, pull that kind of clever trick and then you go to the store and you're trying to buy something that is like like $19 even with tax and everything and you give them the $3 they <laughs> say you don't got enough you ain't even close not even close I like that three money that three money there is clever that's, that, that's really subtle really subtle there but yes my brother man um yeah, free will, man. Think about it, my brothers and sisters, yourself, about free will. You know what I mean? Free will. I think all people have potential of free will. But in the real world, in this life, sometimes, in some situations, like I said to the brother before, I have free will to say certain things, but say I won't say some things around, say, my mother or my father or around some people. You know what I'm saying? You know, because of honor, especially like mother and father. You know what I'm saying? I'll say around my friend, but not. So that means that free will I choose not to say it around my, you say, mother or father. Because I want to honor them. Right? I can say it around my friend because my friend is on my same level. Right? I'm not under that same, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, to honor. Because if I honor my friend, I don't think that that gives me long life on the days which Yahuwah, our Elohim, gives us. You know what I'm saying? On that level. You know, but I think what happens in the world is that sometimes because of men and people, you know what I mean? Because of fear or favor, our will gets slaved. So it's almost like if everybody has 100% when they come in the world, sometimes if you're, you're in fear or favor of some people, that means that you might and say it's a wrong type of, you know, honor or whatever. That means that part of your willpower is enslaved. You know what I mean? You're not as willing as or able to act on that will because of that fear and favor. You know, because you... Yeah, it's based on your mindset. Because how well your mindset stay, like, you have certain people, right, with some of the things they do, you wonder why would they do certain things like that. But wait, but if you look back into the background and see where and how they grew up, you would, you know, then you'd have a better understanding of mm. why these people is doing such and such a things because you know better. That's why you're wondering why they don't know better. But if you put yourself in their shoes, you you would understand why they don't know better. That's true. That's true. You know, so it's all about getting to getting a like a mindset change. In a, is that much people as we possibly can. We can't get everybody, but if we could change the mindset of enough people, it will make a trickle down effect. But it's to change the mindset. That's and true. Like as much this education is the key. And mm. when I say education, the militants don't jump on me, you know, because education means to learn. So. We interact with just school and thing, you know. So education means to learn, you know. You could do it on your own. You could do it amongst the brethren them. You go to school to draw you know, out. You could study plants. Mm -hmm. You could study the the, the the atmosphere, the universe. You know all these things, you know. So education is to learn, you know. So and to draw out and to draw yeah. out, draw out the truth, exactly. Yes. And that's what we're looking you for. Know, it's true. When you said what you said there, I saw a kind of a vision based on the scripts that when the mind state changes one will see a perceptible change also in the heavens and earth too and part of the reason why things are the way they are is because of the mind state of humanity that almost like our mind state it's not that the almighty doesn't have the almighty power to do it but it's almost like um waiting until the harvest fully comes you know you know when that mind state like how our mind state affects our environment Especially collectively, yes. you know what I mean? Collectively, you know, like you go to certain places and there's a good vibe, maybe among the people. And it's because of all those people there make a good vibe. You go to some parts of town and you'd be like, why does it seem, I see all the lights out, but it feels dark here. You know what I mean? You're able to yeah. perceive because you're really seeing not the physical light, but you're seeing the lack of, of that spiritual cycle or heavily burdened souls, you know? And, and it's, it's for us to have that mercy on ones, like the brother said, if you really understand, you know, like not to condemn, like, like the Messiah said, don't condemn. The King James translated as don't judge not. It really says, don't be so condemnatory. He says, don't be so condemnatory, you know? Because if you understand that, the Holy Spirit might be able to use you, right? You know what I mean? To get them a good word that can help them on that path to freedom, to freeness. You know what I mean? To the true freeness right. where they can exercise their will, you know, righteously. As His Majesty says, to make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil is to show the greatest wisdom. He says, in order to follow this aim, one must be guided by the translation translator says religion, the Amharic is hymeno. I bring out the sense of living faith, what's really righteous. Right? You know, so to make our wills obedient, you know, to good influence, you know, and to avoid evil. That's that's the really good use of our willpower. But the consequences is what I think people who are afraid that say the Bible and the the God of the Bible, as they say, you know, the Abrahamic God, as other people say, doesn't give you free will. What you mean he doesn't give you free will? You know what I mean? 
he told Adam what he told him, right? And Adam still went ahead and eat. That proves that. <laughs> I just believe those people want to do what they want to do with no consequences, you know? So I guess if there's a consequence, that means it's not free will. Is well, that what they're trying to say? No, 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 no. It's not that, bro. If there's a bad consequence, that's it. Well, because I'm bad one. I mean, because they want the good consequence. <laughs> you know, when they get the bad thing, then they start praying to God and say, "Why God let that happen? <laughs> what, when God, when God let I you steal, when, when God let you steal or get away with doing some uh, some other uckery, you never got caught from it. You don't say, God, why didn't you let me get caught? But then when you get caught, one <laughs> <laughs> sing a song in the song he say, um. So, um, sorry to be sorry to be caught, not sorry for the thought. Ah, ah, you know something that my earthly say say that sometimes it's not a sin is not always what we do, but it's sometimes what we think. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Right. Like if one get on those levels, one will really see the spirituality and be able to work it out in the five psychology, five cycle. You know much better because it all begins there <laughs> like the mind state i think this is good man that we start zooming on the mind state you know what i mean and yeah, father that free will is correction of thought as well you know in, in fact we can see the whole garden incident as an exercise of free will true i, I told adam this I, now he has the woman and now let's see what they're gonna do you know what i mean you know he could say, oh, oh, he, he said not to eat of it. He could have done like that, you know, but they they made a choice. They, they made a free choice. You know what I mean? Even the even the serpent would say, go eat it. You better eat it. You know, and he was like, you know, for Elohim knows in the day that you eat of it. And Elohim said later on in, in, in 322, right, what did he say? For the man has become as one of us. You know what I mean? To know these things. But man being a kind of a, for lack of a better word, a lesser Elohim. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? A lesser Elohim. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like you make a statue of yourself, right? That statue is not, it maybe look just like you, but, but you're greater than the statue. <laughs> and for the statue to even come close to you, it has to go through a whole bunch of changes. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's what man is experiencing to this very moment. The consequences of our choices. You know? Um, yeah, it's a, there's a word I want to seal up with from Revelation. Just Revelation, because Revelation is the only book that kind of... Isn't it amazing how Revelation brings us back to the garden and to the tree of life? It ties it in. And it says, if any wannabe... Uh, like I like that. There's that verse where that there's that choice factor. There's that choice factor. Where's that? Where's that area with that, that, that choice factor? It says right here. I think it's Revelation, Revelation, 22, and 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, make him be righteous still. Or go on being righteous. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. You know, so right there, that even shows that there's a, a choice factor. You know what I mean? When we choose, we just have to look at what consequences. What are the consequences? You know what I mean? I think we all know enough as humanity of good and evil to be able to look ahead. <laughs> Well, based on what you just read right there, I'd like to quote the great Ron Benjamin. Uh-huh, aye, aye. When he said, Our duty is to walk the earth in righteousness and to break righteousness down into syllables, which is, in everything you do, right choiceness. Make the right choice in everything you do. Righteousness, oh, right choiceness. Oh, right choiceness. Right choiceness. Right choiceness. Right choiceness. Yes, sir. Yes, I. Toda, Toda. Yes, give thanks, Miskana, Miskana. Yes, I. Any seal up word? That's a wonderful seal up word right there. But any seal up word, my brother. Yeah, man. No big seal up word. I just gonna use my, you know, my last breath here, and this just vibes in with 
the Honorable Rasa Danis Tafari and I and I Rasimo aka Coronel to give thanks to His Majesty Xavier Karamawi Haile Silasia. And we said, Ja, Ras guidance on our text and each and every one. Long life, good health, and blessing to all the families of those who are listening. Amen. We give thanks. Amen. 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 And with this last breath on this pod right here, 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 Yeshua Shalom, King of Kings Christ, peace. Nigus Salam. Yesu Salam. Yes, I. One love, my brother and brothers and sisters. Shalom, Rastafari. Eyes is I. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Yes.